Hello everyone, it's Tyler with Diesel Laptops. We're now actually going to connect to an ECM. At least we're going to use our demo mode and kind of cheat it. So first of all, we're going to use our Cummins as an example. You'll see that we can have two options here. There's a start button. There's a start one with the film strip. If you do the one with the film strip, you'll notice that it's going to come up here and tell you what cable you need to use. On highway trucks are always going to use the same cables. And it's also going to give you a picture of where the cable connector could possibly be. And there's going to be a little video in here as well that they've done to kind of show you where the connectors could be. So they tried really hard to give you all the information available to find what you need and where to connect to. So instead of hitting next to actually connect, I'll show you what happens when you do the other button. And that's the start button. And in our case, we're going to cheat. We're going to do this demo diagnosis. And it kind of bypasses a lot of that stuff. and just pretty much brings you right to the screen and says turn the ignition on. Um, so right now, what would happen in the real world is exactly what you're seeing here. We're connecting to the vehicle. It'll take anywhere from 15 seconds to 45 seconds, depending on the make of the ECM. So CAT takes a little bit longer. Cummins is fairly quick. Detroit and International are lightning quick. Again, just all depends on the complexity and what's going on there. It's not just connecting, but it's downloading a bunch of information, figuring out what variant it is, and all those things. So as I scroll down here, you will see on the parameter tab, let's just start there first. So parameter tab, if I click on any of these parameters, you will see it then shows me that there are how many parameters available. There's 135. So it takes it a second here in our demo mode, but you're going to start seeing over here some values populate, and you're going to see some green and red values. What those green and red values represent is the low and the high of the value of that specific sensor or value while we've been connected to the vehicle. So you can then easily see what's been changing as they've been connected to the vehicle. Those aren't spec values. Those are what they're low and high while you've been connected. Furthermore, besides just sensor values, as I scroll down here, you'll start seeing all the switch positions, cruise switch, air conditioning pressure switch, cruise control, etc., etc. That gives you some alive values to kind of look at while you're trying to make sure a sensor is working properly or components function properly on the truck. So this is great. It's a big list of sensors. As you can see, 135 of them. Sometimes you want to filter that down a little bit. So what you would do is you would click on the filter button. And in the filter button, you can simply and easily just select what you want to watch very quickly. So I would select those, hit the checkbox, and now I'm only watching those sensors. To remove the filter, I click back on the little filter icon, delete filter, and boom, there everything is back again. Besides that, you can also make some favorites so that you don't have to constantly go pick the sensors you want to watch. So you do that by hitting the little favorite icon down here. And the favorite icon, let's go pick some different ones. Uh, we'll do cruise control, settings, uh, maybe some of our def stuff, and then we hit the OK button. It's going to say, what do you want to call this? And we'll just call this Tyler's Test Values. And we'll hit the OK button. And now there's our Tyler's test values with our favorite parameters. And this is saved in the system forever. So we can make as many of these favorites as you want, which makes it real nice if you're trying to set up a favorite for maybe a fuel system or uh, ignition system or exhaust. Kind of let you see all your favorites. And again, you can reset your min and max. You can actually do recordings from here, which we'll do that in another video to kind of show how recordings are done so you can play back things and watch them later. And obviously you can print out this information as well. So let's go back to this menu here, and we want to show you one other thing. There's this little picture here called the dashboard. And what the dashboard is, is it gives you a graphical representation of all those values that are in the parameter tab. So you'll have anywhere from one to four different dashboards. This one's obviously the fuel injection system. So it's going to show you some of the pressures going on, but it's a nice, quick, easier way to look and see what's going on on a specific system. The fault tab, and we'll have a whole other training video on just the fault tabs, but as I go in here, you'll see that it will be either red for active, and let's scroll down here and see if we have any inactive ones. Yeah, there's a guy right there. So that one's yellow, and it says MEM, so it's completely different than the other ones. To find the troubleshooting for any of these codes, you would just double click it, and it's going to give you the OEM flash code along with the PID and the FMI, and again, it'll tell you how many times it happened. Again, covered more in depth on the next training video we do as well. What you need to note for now is that there'll be different icons over here on the right hand side. Every single one will have this red question mark. And this is that solve problems that we talked about earlier where it's a new feature they're coming out with. There's nothing in there today. If you click on it today, what it's going to do is say you're not subscribed because there is nothing to subscribe to. 
Some of them will have some other icons, like this one over here has a whitish gray icon. If I click on that one, that one will give me a little more information about the code. If I click back, you'll see on some of these as well, there is the little diode looking symbols, and that's a wiring diagram. So if I click on the wiring diagram, and then I click on the engine that I'm actually connected to for this demo mode and hit the OK button, it's going to pull up Texas wiring diagrams. Again, the other video where we go through how to repair codes and how to look up things, you'll find we have a lot more information in there to help guide you as well. This is just simply what's built into Texa. Pulled it right up to the exact sensor we're looking for. Gives you an idea of how to look and find things. If I right left click on this, sorry, left click, and then I click on image, it'll actually give me a picture of what that sensor looks like. And as I scroll around here through, you can click on some other ones as well. All right, so let's close that. And let's hit the little arrow in the upper right corner to go back. And let's go check out this other tab. This tab is the ECU info tab. So this tab will tell you information such as the ECU code, serial number, um, what exact model we have. Um, again, we're in demo mode, so things are coming up a little funky, but your information would be much more cleaner in there as well. The activations tab, people always ask, hey, what can I do on this? particular vehicle, activations and settings are where it has all that information. So on the activation tab, again, pay attention to the scroll bar on the right. You'll see there is a quite a variety of different commands you can do. Anything you can do inside the OEM software, you can do inside the Texa. So that does not cover horsepower changes and tuning and ECM calibrations, but all your diagnostic stuff is definitely included in here. So if you learn to activations, or if I go over here to settings, is where you'll see the other one as well. So after treatment filter, resets, reset the NOx, changing the cruise control, just command after command after command after command is loaded into the system. So that is the very quick and dirty overview of how to kind of navigate around and how to get to where you want to go inside the Texa. Thank you for watching.